Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I am Jim. Thanks for stopping by. This video is all about Luminar Neo and specifically the masking tools in Luminar Neo based on the most recent update that we got. These include the new mask AI functionality, a linear gradient mask, and a radial gradient mask. All three of those are new. This is my deep dive video and I'm going to cover all three of those. Previously, we had the brush mask and that was all we had. I covered that in, a, in depth in a previous video. I won't be really going into that one here, but in this video, I'll talk about the three new masking types, show you the masking controls, and share some tips and tricks and things like that about how to get the most out of them. Let's get going. I've got a photo here that, as you can see, I already did some things in Develop Raw to basically make the photo look a little bit better. So if I hit the before and after, it looked like that, and now it looks like that. I'll use this as one of my example photos. So the three new masking types, Mask AI, as you may know, is automatically, based on AI, identifying objects in the photo. It frankly does a pretty amazing job. It's not perfect. This is version one of the tool. It will only get better, but honestly, it's a massive time saver, even if it's not perfect yet. It'll continue to get better, as I said, but we'll touch on that. I want to talk about linear and radial as well because they're super useful, super powerful. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and start with Structure AI simply because it's very visible. Uh, so I'm going to drag it to 100, which makes it incredibly visible. This is not an edit tutorial. This is a masking tutorial. So I just want to show you how it looks. I wouldn't apply Structure AI at 100. So if you want to get into masking, click on the masking icon and you have the four options here. I'm going to skip brush. I'm going to start on linear gradient. Linear, as the name implies, is based on a straight line, and it gives you the ability to really apply things fairly specifically within an image. So you click on that once, and you can see here it says click and drag to draw gradient. So if you click and drag up, the mask is going to start at the bottom. If you click and drag down, the mask is going to be at the top. So in this case, I've got a little bit of a line here in these rocks in this bottom left corner. So I'm going to click here and drag up, which means, as you can see, the pink is coming, or red, whatever color you call that, um, is coming into the photo, and that is where the mask is applying. If you're not familiar with masks, basically you're painting the adjustment into the photo. So it's a paint job using what's called a mask. The mask is the red area. Now with a linear gradient, you've got basically a few different things to be aware of. It's the same whether you're using this from the ground up, which I did here, or if I started higher and came down. The difference is um, what I'm about to describe. When you start at the bottom and go up, the redder, reddest area, which is the area below this bottom line, you're getting 100% of the adjustment there. That's complete coverage, basically. From that bottom line to that center line, you're getting, as you can see, it gradually fades. And so you're getting a gradually lessened amount of that 100, 100 on Structure AI in that zone. And then from the middle line to the top line, it gradually decreases even further until it gets to that top line, at which point it's completely gone. And then, of course, by logic, you would assume that from this top line and above, it's getting zero of the adjustment. Now, if you wanted that to be the opposite, you can, of course, hit invert on the tool, which flips the mask. But I'm going to flip it back, and I want to point out that this uh, you've got some options here. You can rotate this line based on just holding your cursor over that center line. You can rotate, and then you can grab this line and extend that gradient zone to increase the gradual adjustment zone, right? So it'll gradually decrease even further over a wider area, or you can collapse that if you want uh, more of what I would call a hard edge, you can have that much lower. I tend to go fairly gradual, and so I wanted to point that out. And then of course you can move this up and down in the photo if you want or need to. I'm gonna do something about like that, which gets the majority of the adjustments on the rocks and then gradually fades into the water. Once you have completed that, if you click this back arrow, it will take you back to the main masking window. Note that you have now committed that mask to the image, unless of course you wanna get rid of it. But you don't have the ability to go back in. If you do, it's gonna ask you to draw a, a gradient, right? Well, you've already got your gradient there, so you don't have the ability to go back and edit that gradient specifically. There are some tips and tricks I will show you about how to further refine that, including using the brush or stacking AI mask with it. But what I wanna point out is you've got your mask in place, and if you do a before and after, you can see it is applied to those rocks. But hey, there's these masking controls or mask actions as it's called. If you click on that, you can see you've got six different boxes here. The first one to be aware of is show in the bottom right corner. If you click on that, hey, there's my mask. I can see where my 
mask is. So if for some reason your adjustment isn't showing up or something, click on show to make sure you see where the mask is. Now you can always hide that if you want to. I'm gonna leave show on for a second and I'm gonna click invert. It's the same invert as before. It's just that this is after I've committed the tool or the mask versus prior. So I've inverted it. So now if I were to go turn off show, structure AI is applying again in the red area, which is the rest of the photo and not the rocks. So if you look at the before and after, you can see all that structure is up there. I don't want that. I'm going to invert it back. It'll apply back to the rocks. And if I click show, you will see that it is there. Now there is a copy and paste function to be aware of. So if I create this mask and love it and want to use it on further tools here in this photo, I can just click copy, go to another tool, click paste and apply that mask. So that's a very simple copy and paste function. Two others to be aware of are fill and clear. Clear as the name implies, you click it, your mask is gone. Keep in mind that did not change your adjustment. Your adjustment is still at 100, but you're not seeing it anywhere on the photo because you cleared the mask. So the mask is basically completely gone because you cleared it, but the adjustment hasn't been adjusted. It's still at 100, right? So it's just not showing you a mask. Uh, and because there's no mask, it's not applying to the photo. Hope that makes sense. Fill is the opposite of clear. Fill is you click on that and the entire photo gets the mask. So again, if I turn off show, you can see structure AI is everywhere, right? The entire photo has it because I clicked fill. I think I'm going to go clear and what I would do is come in here with my linear gradient and draw that back where I want it to be just to get my uh, structure AI in those rocks and I'll back up and you can see that my structure AI is there in the rocks again because I cleared the mask and then I went back and I applied it again with the new linear gradient. So that's how that works. I want to get in now to radial gradient. Same tool. I'm going to go to 100. It's applying everywhere. I don't want that. And what I want to do is get a radial gradient. Now radial is more of a circle or oval and you can adjust the shape as well as of course the size. As you see here, click and drag to draw gradient. So I can click and drag, but you will notice the mask actually shows up outside, not inside. So that's where invert comes into play. Uh, some people may want to use it that way. I typically invert it probably about every time. And so now my mask in that pink area is basically the inside of the radial. And as you hover, you can see you have controls here. You've got a few different things. If you hover out here, you've got this double headed arrow, which allows you to basically rotate it you can get the same thing if you get really close to the center circle you've got that little double headed arrow as well now you've also got some dots here in this outer frame which basically allow you to adjust the shape so i can squish the uh, sides to make it more of an oval or pull them out to make it more of an oval in that direction i think in this case i'd probably go a little bit more like that you've got the same thing up here if you grab that little dot and pull it down you can see how you're adjusting the shape so basically you just play with it until you get it to cover the area you want it to cover now the same thing as with a linear where you have the varying degrees of the application of the adjustment based on the mask you have the same thing here the center area inside this first circle you're getting 100 and then from that outer edge of that circle to the outer circle that's your gradient zone so you can just grab anywhere on this line where you have that double arrow and you can just come in and adjust just that gradient zone, which is kind of your feathering or your transition zone. And you can adjust that accordingly. I tend to go fairly broad there because I want a smooth transition. If you grab the center one, you can pull that to cover a wider area, which is something I need to do here. So what I need to do for this one is grab that broader area, but I want to pull in some of that gradient. I don't need it to go that far. So maybe something about like that. And I think I'm going to tilt it a little bit just to get a little bit more of a turn. And I think I'm going to move this around a little bit. I actually think I'm going to go a little bit bigger to cover some more area because what I'm wanting to do is, as you can imagine, is get structure AI on the mountains and the rocks and the boathouse, but not really in the sky. Something like that looks good. Once I back out of this tool, it's basically a committed mask. The only options I have are the ones that are down here. You can't necessarily re-edit the radial. You would have to re create it. But there it is. Now my structure AI is in that circle or oval sort of shape over here on the left hand side. But here's where mask AI comes in handy. Now if you're not familiar with mask AI, watch my video there where I talk about it. I've actually got two videos. I'll put them both up there where I delve into using that tool and I will go into it some more here in this video as well. But mask AI automatically identifies objects in a photo including sky and water. So if you notice here, I've got
got a radial mast covering this mountain on the side, the boathouse, most of the rocks here. I like that quite a bit. I think that looks great. But you know, I don't really want the structure AI to be hitting that water. This is where mask AI comes in because one of the great and powerful things about the masking tools is you can use them in combination. So mask AI, watch that video if you've never seen this tool, but it automatically identifies things, including skies and water and mountains and things like that. So what I can do is I can go in and click on water because when you click on it, you're selecting it. So if you remember, I had that radial on this left-hand side, which you can still see here is in place. And what I did is I added AI mask to also add the water because when you click once on water, it will select the water. Here's the fun, cool thing is if you click it again, you're actually deselecting the water. So if I click that, you'll notice it just removed the mask from the water, which means my radial mask covering the mountains and the rocks is no longer hitting the water because I don't really want structure AI in the water. I really wanted it in those other areas. So you can combine these masks to get better control. Now, if you wanna see more videos about this, I'll come back and do that. Leave me a comment down below. And if you find this kind of stuff interesting, give me a thumbs up, let YouTube know that you're enjoying these kinds of videos. But that's a great little trick to allow you to customize how things uh, are applied. You can stack these masks together to get more refinement and control over your image. Now that I've done that, if I show you the before and after, it is before, no structure AI, and there it is after, which includes my radial mask removing the water. So once again, if I go to mask actions and click on show, my mask is a radial minus the water. So great control, great power, and it really lets you customize the image and where things are applying in that image. I'm gonna hit reset on structure AI and I'm gonna go back to a 100 on adjustment and I'm gonna show you some mask AI. Click on masking, click on AI mask, and of course it calculates and it does a pretty quick job and you can see the various elements that it picks up. It does pick up nine different objects. That would be, I gotta read them, people, sky, water, architecture, transportation, flora, mountains, natural ground, and man-made ground. So nine different things if they exist in the photo. There's no people in this photo so it doesn't pick up a person, but Mask AI automatically selects areas. So if I click on sky, it'll find the sky. If I click on water, you already saw this, it'll find the water. So one of the things I like to do with Structure AI is take the sky and the water and go negative because I like to smooth them out. I would back out of this and instead of having a hundred structure, I would go negative and you can see I'm going to go negative 100 just to show specifically in the water you can see that better you can't really see it in the sky but that would simulate a long exposure effect with really smooth water let me show you that before and after before and after notice the rocks are not really being impacted and if I go to the masking actions and click show you can see the water I mean it did a great job I mean there's a little bit on that rock and these rocks but again this is where you can stack edits so you can get the brush, you can get the eraser tool, and you can come in and you can just come in and say, well, I really want to erase that. I accidentally hit something in the water. But you can come in and basically erase the mask from that rock. You could do the same with this rock, etc., etc. I'm not going to go through all that, but that gives you more control over the final look of the image. And if I go back and hide this, you can see now I've removed that smoothing from some of the rocks where it overlapped. AI masking, very powerful. It's not perfect 100% of the time, but it gives you a lot of control. Control. It's certainly a lot faster than doing everything by hand with a brush. Even if you have to refine it, you can do that fairly quickly. My hope is in the future, they add some additional controls for edges and things like that that give us even more control. But stacking the mask like I did with the radial and the water in the mask AI and removing the water does give you some quick and precise control over specific elements in the photo. I wanna show you one more example of how you can stack edits with AI mask and linear gradient to control edges. An example like this comes in uh, pretty handy. So if I take this and let's say I wanna brighten the sky like, you know, uh, 1.0, right? Like one stop. If I click on AI mask and identify the sky, click on that and you can see the mask and you can see it's not specifically precise around the edges. So if I back up, you can see that around the edges, it's a little bit dark. It, it's, you know, it's not perfect, right? Again, version one of the tool, it's going to get better, but you can stack edits with linear gradient and AI mask, just like I did on the water and the radial. I wanted to show you this. So if I come in here 
and do something like, again, brightening of one, and then I go into mask and get a linear gradient. What I like to do is give it a fairly good kind of feathering, that gradient or transitional zone, make it reasonably broad, and then come in here and adjust where it's, you know, kind of laying over those edges. You know, there's definitely some transition there. And then you come in with AI mask. And remember, it identifies elements like mountains. I can choose the mountains. So what it'll do is it'll add the mountains on top of the gradient mask that you already have. So this is a combined view. It's got the linear gradient that I put in place and it's got the mountains. But remember, if you click it a second time, you deselect it. So I'm now telling it, take the mountains out. And now you can see the edges are a bit smoother. And so that light difference between the two is less pronounced. So if you look at the before and after, it doesn't look as bad along the edges. This can work. It's not perfect every time. It doesn't work on every photo. It can depend on how close the object is and how complicated that horizon is. But even on this one, which is, this is not a perfectly flat horizon. This is a reasonably complicated horizon. And I think it's done a pretty good job. So that's something to think about. Stacking those tools gives you a bit more control. That my friends is my masking deep dive on the linear gradient, the radial gradient, and the mask AI capability. Hope it gives you a good idea of how these tools work. If you want more masking videos, leave me a comment below. If you enjoy this stuff, give me a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you enjoy these videos. I'll be back soon with more and I hope you're having fun with it. Thanks for watching my friends. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I'll see you soon. And until then, you guys take care and adios.